Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, Skipton Baptist Church online today. Um, my name is Matt. I'm the youth minister. This is Ruth. Hello, Ruth. Hello. Um, and we're really glad that you are with us this morning uh, to share in our worship. The theme for our summer services is Joseph, a life less ordinary. And each week we'll be looking at different periods of Joseph's life and hearing what God may have for us today. The services will be a little shorter than usual and we hope all ages will be able to access some, if not all, of the service. So the services are going to include uh, different members of our church sharing some thoughts. Um, today our theme is uh, influence and identity and uh, we're really glad to have Jess Keeble sharing with us. So yeah, we hope you enjoyed the service and, uh, yeah, and we hope that the Lord speaks to you through it. Brilliant. Let's pray as we just begin our service today. Father, we just thank you for where you've brought our church so far. And we thank you so much for your word to us. And we just pray that as Jess speaks to us this morning, you would just inspire us with your words and speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still. When striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I'll stand. By the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live Delay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands. The power of Christ in me From life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny No power of hell, no scheme of man Can ever pluck me from his hands Till he returns
over me like a tidal wave clean out what pulls me to the grave nothing left that you don't love and take me where your river flows and heal the desert in so let it wash over my feet all I'm asking for is just a drink and I thirst for you 
Yes, my soul is there. the stream even more my soul is thirsty and I thirst for you Spirit of the living God would you fall afresh like rain Burst the doors and flood the holes Into forgotten rooms inside our hearts And we will all be swept away In the current of your love and grace Living water flow to me all I'm asking for is just a drink And I thirst for you Yes, my soul, it thirsts for you Even as the deer is panting for the stream Even more my soul is thirsty I thirst for you. Sing verse one again. Wash over me like a tidal wave. Clean out what pulls me to the grave. And nothing left that you don't love. Take me where your river flows and Heal the desert in my soul Let it wash over my feet All I'm asking for is just a drink And I thirst for you Yes, my soul, it thirsts for you Even as the deer is panting for the streams Even more my soul is thirsty I thirst for you One thing I ask and I would seek To see you there in front of me With nothing standing in the way Just me before you unashamed One thing I ask and I would seek To see you there in front of me With nothing standing in the way Just me before you unashamed reflections from me on why I believe in Jesus and what difference it makes to my life. There's probably three categories. Uh, one is observation of others, one is my own experience and one is studying. Um, a memorable observation of others would be my mum and she had gone away from her upbringing in Sunday school when she was an adult and uh, just married and when I was sort of about later primary years she actually came back to faith quite dramatically and she'd had um, 
two sort of visions or encounters with Jesus, uh, which were so real to her. And she recounted them many times over the years to me. Um, so they just feel part of my family history. Uh, one of them where she just had a straight face-to-face -face conversation with a physical being uh, who she recognises Jesus um, up in her room and then a second time when she was scraping the scales off fish at the kitchen sink making dinner and she just sensed Jesus was in the room and turned around and had a conversation uh, which then resulted her in her being healed from a long-term illness so they were really major uh, things for her which influenced my own faith uh, over the years. In terms of my own experiences there's been lots of different things which I would attribute to an encounter with Jesus. A memorable one from my primary years was just sitting in the car on my own and hearing some worship music playing on a cassette tape and just felt God's presence with me and my faith that Jesus was a real historical figure with significance for my life um, was present even then. Later in my teenage years when I was trying to sort of carve my own way away from my parents who were by then quite committed Christians, um, I was really touched by seeing a video of the life of Jesus and just that video uh, really moved me and changed my life and uh, gave me a lot to think about. It didn't make me very bold in my faith though. It did pr pretty much make me a person of faith, but I was a bit ashamed and it took me quite a few months, possibly even years to really say that I was a Christian in my own right. Um, but by the time I did get to grips with that, I, I did feel able to talk to all my friends and teachers at school. And it was great to see some of them come to faith during my high school years. And then uh, by the time I went to university, I wanted to study more uh, about the Bible. So I went to theological college and really enjoyed church history, biblical archeology, span Greek, New Testament, Old Testament studies, just trying to really understand the tenets of my faith and see what was tradition and trappings that could be dispensed with and what was really essential. And I hope that does make me more gracious and understanding of others today. What difference does it make? Um, well over the years the historical figure of Jesus has strengthened me in all sorts of ways through his own life and teaching and influence um, but then obviously the hope and presence of Jesus now by the Holy Spirit makes a day-to-day -day impact um, when I'm concerned about things at work or in my family, um, that faith that God's presence can make a difference in any situation is fantastic. And I love um, what Annie sometimes speaks about, saying, where is Jesus in the room? And in any difficult situation to just ask Jesus where he is by his Holy Spirit and finding out what Jesus thinks of any situation. Um, that's an amazing gift that he left his presence with us by his Holy Spirit to comfort and strengthen us as we live for him. Stories of the Bible Joseph in Egypt This is Joseph who was the son of Israel and Rachel. Ah. He was his father's favorite, so his brothers hated him oh. and sold him into slavery. Yeep. You see, Joseph was taken to Egypt, Ooh. and Potiphar, one of the Pharaoh's officials, bought him for his household. God was with Joseph, and he did well in Potiphar's house. Oh! Potiphar saw that God made everything Joseph did a success. Aha! So he put Joseph in charge of his whole house. Yeah! And God blessed Potiphar's house because of this. Uh. 
Potiphar's wife saw how well Joseph was doing in the house, and she wanted to make him do bad things. Joseph ran away from her because he wanted nothing to do with someone who would try to make him do the wrong thing. This made Potiphar's wife angry, and she wanted to be rid of Joseph. So she lied and made Potiphar believe that Joseph had done the bad things that she wanted him to do. Potiphar burned with anger against Joseph and sent him to prison. While Joseph was in prison, again, he did well and the warden soon made him responsible for all that was done there. God was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. When two full years had passed, Pharaoh was having unsettling dreams. Pharaoh did not understand his dreams, so he sent for Joseph. Pharaoh asked Joseph to tell him the meaning of his dreams. With God's help, Joseph told Pharaoh that the dreams told of what could come in the future, and he explained all the dreams to the Pharaoh. Pharaoh believed that what Joseph was saying was true. He trusted Joseph as a wise man, and he put him in charge of the land of Egypt, of Pharaoh's palace, and of all his people. I want to show you my mug. This is one of my favourite mugs. It was given to me by my mum and it says, I am so many things. And on the inside, as I drink my cup of tea, it tells me what those things are. It says, I am God's very good idea. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am pleasing to my heavenly father. I am outrageously loved. I am not alone. I am a child of God. I'm the apple of God's eye. And I thought about this mug because when I was asked to look at the story of Joseph, it really reminded me of the stories I hear at work. I work with people who've had very traumatic stories. Like Joseph, there's, there's slavery, there's, there's kidnap, there's imprisonment, there's movement to a new and foreign lands and, and leaving behind so much of your identity and it was identity that really struck me because often when that happens when the, that trauma happens it has a huge impact on someone's physical and mental health and their sense of identity so i was really interested to reread the story to see how the trauma impacted Joseph and what sort of a person he was. So when we first meet him, he's defined and described by his relationships. In chapter seven, verse three, it says, Israel or, or Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other sons and demonstrated this to him and make, by making him an ornate robe. Now, as a parent, I've got a bit of an issue with parent with loving one child more than the rest and demonstrating that. Um, and I think the consequences of that are, are quite clear in the story. Um, he was attacked by his brothers and sold as a slave and ended up in Egypt. But in Egypt, again, the description we have of him is, is about his relationship. It's defined by his relationship with God. Um, in 39 verse 2, it says, the Lord was with Joseph and so he prospered. And he, he lived in Potiphar's house and he was promoted within Potiphar's house, but falsely accused by Potiphar's wife and put into prison. And when he got to prison, he was again defined by his relationship with God. In 39 verse 21, it says, but while Joseph was 
there in prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favour in the eyes of the prison warden. And even though he was in prison, things went really well for him. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. So again and again and again, Joseph is defined by his relationships. One of the things, one of the successes he had was, was being able to interpret dreams. He interpreted dreams for the cupbearer and for the baker who, who were both in prison. The cupbearer to Pharaoh um, was, was subsequently released from prison, just as Joseph said he should be, he would be. But the baker met a sticky end. And when the cupbearer went back to the service of Pharaoh, he, he forgot about Joseph and he forgot about him for two years, which is a long time. So two years later, Pharaoh himself had some funny dreams and the cupbearer remembered Joseph at that point and hauled him out of prison. And in chapter 41, verse 16, um, we hear Joseph's voice. And Joseph defines himself again by his relationship. When he's asked to interpret the dreams, um, he said he couldn't, but God would. And, and so he did. And when he did, Pharaoh described Joseph as wiser and more discerning than everyone else and made him in charge of more or less everything. Now, Joseph was only 30 years old at that point, And there was a time when I thought that 30 was old, but I'm way past 30 now and it's not old. And to be in charge of the whole country is extraordinary. But Joseph was, and he was wise and discerning and hardworking, and he put God's plans into action, gathering the grain. And when the famine came, he opened the storehouses and sold the grain to the Egyptians and then to the whole world. And Joseph himself continued to divine himself by his relationship with God. In chapter 41, verse 51, he names his children. He, his first child was called Manasseh, which means God made me forget all my trouble and my father's household. And his next child was called Ephraim, because God made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. And then later on in the story, after Joseph's brothers came back and they're reunited and forgiven, Joseph says to his brothers that it was to save lives that God sent him ahead of them to Egypt. Joseph knew his identity. He was loved by his father. He, he knew he was loved by his earthly father and also by his heavenly father. And God was with him. It was relationships that defined his identity and made him resilient to the trauma that he'd gone through so that God could continue to use him for great things. The other side of my mug says, I am God's masterpiece. I am unique. I am made in the image of God. I am enough just as I am. I am a work in progress. I am an overcomer and I am grateful. May you know this week who you are in Christ and live a life of influence just where you are. I'm Ruth, for those of you who don't know me, and I'm married to Joel, and my kids are Asher, Nathan, and Eva. And Chloe and Matt have asked if I could think of something um, for our prayers for this week. So we're thinking about the story of Joseph, and particularly the time when he was in prison, and when he used his influence in a way um, that really helped his situation and where God could use him even in his difficult situation of being in prison. 
So I've been having a think about that, thinking about our week ahead and the ways in which we can use the things that we have, the things that we do with our time um, in our families or for me in my workplace and how we can ask God to help us just to use those situations um, for him. So I've thought of um, an object which is part of the work that I do. I wonder if after we've done this whether you could go and find an object which would be part of your week, something that you use whether that's um, I don't know a book or whether it's a toy or whether it's a game or whether it's um, some hobby that you have, something that you do and then you could go and get the object. So I'm going to get this jar here with um, some money in it and go and find your object and then let's pray and just think about asking God to help us um, with this object in our hands to be his people, to be people who listen to his voice, who use um, the things that we have, the, the gifts that we've been given, but also the influence that we have, like Joseph with his dream while he was in prison. And for me, um, I work helping people with um, sorting out maybe money problems that they've got. Um, and so I'm going to ask God to help me in my work this week to really be his kind of person, to be his follower in my work as I talk to people about how they could use their money in, in a better way, in a more thoughtful way, in a way that pleases him. So that's why I'm holding this jar of money as an object which um, I just like God to help me with in my work this week. So go and find something and hold it in your hand and then let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for the things that we have been given for, for me, for the work that I've been given to do. For the people listening, we thank you for the activities that they may have on this week, for their families, for their hobbies, the sports that they do, the things that they enjoy doing with their time. I just pray for each of us as we hold an object in our hands, which reminds us of the way that you can use us in our situations to bring good for other people. We think about Jesus saying that um, we can be people who are like salt of the earth, who bring saltiness wherever we go, people who can bring light. And as I hold this jar in my hands, I pray that in my work, I would bring light to people who were struggling to um, just know what to do with their money and how to spend it properly, how to save money and how to look after their families. And I pray for each of us that with the things in our hands, we bring them to you and we ask you, Father God, to help us with our week, with the things in our hands to know how to use them well, how to use them to bring you real happiness and just to show your love to people through the way we use our time and our gifts. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. And 
who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken i am forgiven the king of kings calls me his own beautiful savior i'm yours forever jesus christ my living home and hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope and hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion Declared the grave has no claim on me. Jesus, yours is the victory. Oh, and hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. And hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation.